I personally do not believe that the Negro of the South wants to go to school with the white people. In my opinion, Ms. Martin, I think that the decision handed down by the Supreme Court is one of the most wonderful things that happened in America and especially in the South in the last 50 years. And I suppose the last area of my own life to come under the influence and dominance of Jesus Christ was in my own attitude towards the Negro. What kind of a fool wakes up in the morning and doesn't know anything about what happened yesterday or the week before or the year before? Why would we do that as a community? Why would we do that as a community? Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thanks for being with me here again on my channel where we talk about American identity, family stories, and all the things that make us American. And so right now I'm supposed to be on vacation in sunny Florida, as my Grammy would say. Um, but I'm not. I'm still here in Nashville because I think we caught COVID over Christmas and I've just been canceling everything just to be on the safe side because we've been pretty sick. Um, and I know it's COVID because the first time I had COVID, uh, I couldn't drink coffee. It smelled disgusting. And lo and behold, I haven't had coffee in three days. So I'm suffering through a cup of tea right now because the coffee tastes terrible. And all I have to say is that um, I had a lot of really great interviews that I wanted to bring to you over break, but I postponed them, even though some of them were over Zoom, just because when you're sick, you're just <laughs> like, I'm not on my best right now. Um, but I did want to sit down with you and just watch some old films that I found. They're short, um, but this one in particular, really jumped out at me and I haven't previewed it yet like I've literally just seen the title but it's about uh school segregation in Natchitoches Louisiana and if you've been on my channel you know how important Natchitoches is for me um my mom's gram was born in Campty Louisiana right outside Natchitoches where she grew up and we're gonna do another video about Campty I'm excited to see this so let's jump in and I'll see you on the other side Eighty-five percent white, fifteen percent Negro. A big textile center, Gastonia calls itself the Spindle City and the city of growing beauty. So they're going to do Gastonia, South Carolina. It has a good record of race relations. We move eight hundred and eighty-one miles south to reporter Ed Scott. This is the Cane River, on the whose Kane banks River. the city of Natchitoches, Louisiana, was built. Ed, it's the oldest town in the Louisiana Purchase having had its roots in 1714. It's traditionally and culturally Southern in mood. It has a population today of 12,000 persons, almost half of whom are Negroes. The Negroes of Natchitoches are distinguished by a controversial statue in the town there, erected in grateful recognition of the arduous and faithful services of the good darkies of Louisiana. Otherwise, oh, saw that. the almost 6,000 citizens of Natchitoches observe the normal relationship of white to Negro. Like Gastonia, it has a good record in race relations. Okay. I'm not sure if you're saying the Natchitoches has a good record in race relations because it's segregated and people are okay with it. They're okay going into their Crayola color, door color. I... This is hard. And if you've been on my channel, you know, going to Natchitoches, Louisiana, was something I wanted to do my entire life. Why would you want to go to Natchitoches, Louisiana? But so my mom, my mom's gram was born right outside in Camp Campy, Louisiana, but she grew up in Natchitoches and going there felt like if I could just go there, maybe I could understand my family. Maybe I could understand our family's story. Um, and I have in part, and, and I've stood on the banks of the Cane River. I've walked it it looks almost identical but it's hard for me to watch this to say this is a 1954 civil rights documentary it's still segregated and my mom's grandmother moved to new york in the 30s she wasn't white in louisiana 1954 my grandmother was like 20. my grandmother was like 20 living in new york they would have been going in into the the colored restrooms they'd be going into the weird door for the movie theater for colored people and in new york they weren't this is the supreme court of the united states 
For 165 years, its sacred trust has been to rule on and interpret so the remember, law they're of talking the land about school segregation. as embodied in the Constitution. It's been overturned. Equal justice under the law. By Brown versus the Board On of May 17, this court ruled unanimously that segregation in public schools was not legal. See It Now devotes its entire half hour to an effort to reflect the opinions and attitudes so they're going to go to people in these two towns who live and in see Gastonia, how, how they feel North about Carolina, it. and in Nagatosh, Louisiana. There is no such thing as a typical southern town. We selected Nagatosh and Gastonia because they reflect communities in two distinct parts of the south. We start with Dave Gillespie of the Gaston Citizen. Our greatest need at the moment is level-headedness. Whites of the South should not panic. Negroes should not quit their inflation. It is impossible for the South to turn back the clock and undo the injustice that was done to the Negro when he was brought into slavery. We cannot wish him away. We can Here's the thing with this. First of all, I love what he's saying. I don't know what crazy thing he's going to say next, but I love this. I'm sitting here. I have not been raised in the black community. I have not suffered under Jim Crow. I have not had those things. Have I had weird people say weird remarks to me? Like, yes, but that's nothing, right? That's nothing compared to what we're talking about here. But also, he's saying that we can't send the Negro back. Well, let me tell you something. If slavery hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here. Like, the idea, we can't unring this bell. We can't unring this bell, first of all, and I respect that, and it's true. But the other thing is this, this dichotomy, is, it doesn't exist anymore in the United States. Maybe it existed uh, when the very first enslaved people were stepping on the shores of what is now the United States. It doesn't exist anymore. You know, I mean, it, it, this, this even goes back to the idea of Abraham Lincoln when he was, when he was um, you know, was, there was the talk about sending enslaved people and they did, to a couple of other places to colonize, to free them, to emancipate them, but get them out of the United States. Well, even at that point, people had become so intermixed that this idea of being able to say, well, well, white people don't panic and, and Negroes, you know, don't give up. It's like, well, who are you talking to? Because I'm sitting here right now and I wouldn't be here if enslaved people hadn't made it across the Middle Passage, survived that journey. Many of them survived the journey, survived the plantations, had children who survived, had children who survived, had children who survived. I'm sitting here right now looking like this. You know, I, I think I think this is what I'm talking about. When I say we, we can't say just forget about the history because I think we all don't even really understand the history. I think we're only now starting to understand our history. We cannot close our eyes to his presence. The matter of educating the Negro is only one facet of the question. But the manner in which we handle it, under the principles of the Constitution, will set the pace for the solution of other phases of the so-called Negro problem. In a day when many nations and races are looking to us for leadership, to peace, and to freedom, we need to reflect in our own country the traditional American virtues of justice and fair play. All parts of this country, not only the South, should do some real soul searching in this respect. Next, Kay Dixon, who runs the Gastonia Bank of Commerce. Frankly, I'm troubled. I had uh, hoped for a decision of the Supreme Court that would be something in the nature of a straddle. I was... Uh, opposed to Earl Warren being put on the Supreme Court uh, for several reasons. I thought that he did not have uh, sufficient uh, judicial experience, and I was satisfied that he would not be sympathetic with the Southern viewpoint. Now, while this decision I think that the was Southern anonymous, viewpoint, not felon. yet the Chief Justice uh, masterminded it and uh, rendered the decision. North Carolina, in my opinion, has uh, the very best of social of race relations of any southern state, and I would hate to see that disturbed. The thought in my mind is that uh, 
a proper solution, the correct and best solution would be arrived at not by revolution, but by evolution. Right. Gastonia has a white high school and one for Negroes. This one is for whites. We have uh, been seeing in our uh, newspapers an era comes to an end. Uh, our court has said that the doctrine of uh, equal but separate uh, public school education has no place. What do you uh, <coughs> think about this decision, Jane? Well, our parents are more against non-segregation than we are, but the young people are actually the ones that have to live with them, and we may as well adapt ourselves to it now. Well, I don't feel exactly that way about it. I think people in Gastonia during the past years have gotten away from this purely segregation business because right now on our city council, we have a colored man on our city council here in Gastonia. And... Uh, but I don't think that, I think maybe I'm like most people down here. Uh, we don't react to things being forced down our throats like this. It's entirely a different thing, see, than, other than working it out yourself. Well, I feel as the majority of the spellingers do that this decision is like a cloud coming over our south. It's like land. a cloud coming but, uh, I think in time our uh, colored citizens and white citizens can work out this problem, and um, I think it will strengthen America in the end. America. Well, I learned of the Supreme Court decision, I was disappointed because I'm a southerner. I was taught to be respectful of the Negroes as they were in my home, and I had a maid to bring me up. But I was not taught to socialize with them. I think if we... Uh, since the Supreme Court has given this decision, they will gradually go into our homes, our circles, and our church. And if this has to be done since the Supreme Court has given this, we are going to have to do it slowly because it is such a different way of living. It's going to... Sorry, I was... What is so... I mean, what's getting me is that this is 1954. And I just think about, like, you know, my grandmother, which, does that mean that she's a black person? No. Does that mean that she would be, well, I guess it just depends on how you're perceived, right? What is your family? Who's the family? Uh, and they knew who the family was down there in Louisiana. And it hurts me to, to see this girl, and I don't have any ill will towards her, but it hurts me to see her uh, talking about just the sense of dread of people coming into the community. And I think she said she was raised by a Negro. I think that's what she said. But heaven forbid they come into church with you or whatever. Um I think this is the stuff people need to see and not not to uh, throw shade at people and not to hold people's feet over the fire and and stay angry but to just to just let let regular Americans speak from the past and and not have us have everything filtered not have everything filtered through the media the way it always is like this is raw right affect everything that we do well, Miss Underwood, being a native Georgian, I'm very much against non-segregation. I feel that the Negroes certainly, are, certainly deserve equal rights in, as far as education and schools are concerned. But I'm against the Negroes and the whites going to school together. I think that um, we, as white people, have developed an air of superiority over their race. And I think it would cause for a split in both races if they mixed and mingled because some of them couldn't come up to meet our standards. Well, my opinion on this issue would probably be different from the others here because I have had experience in going to school with the colored in New Jersey. And I have lived up north, uh, well, a lot of my life. And I think that if the people down here could see just how well the colored and white get along in the school in the north, 
And if they could adapt they call themselves it down here like they are there, I don't think there would be any trouble, but it would take a while for the people down here to adapt themselves because we aren't used to anything like that. We still have many people in the South who have the opinion of separate but equal rights, separate but equal privileges. I think that probably that opinion is out of date. By that I mean that during the earlier history of our nation, we had aristocracy, we had a definite line of demarcation as far as the races were concerned. I think the Southerners have progressed to the extent now that we can approach this decision and this question as open-minded individuals, and I think we must do it that way, or else we will never solve the problem. That old opinion, that old school of thought is out of date. What a great kid. This is Highlands High School on North York Road. History tells us that we have much to remember if we were to study American history. There are a number of events that the American people can never forget. To mention a few, the discovery of America, 1492. The Dred Scott decision as handed down by the Supreme Court and the proclamation of emancipation. And perhaps during your time, the development of the atomic bomb. On Monday, May the 17th, Chief Justice Warren read the decision of the Supreme Court justices which ruled out segregation. I am pleased personally uh, at the vote that was handed down, a nine to nothing vote. It proved that the American people are thinking, that our statesmen are truly living up to expectations, that they are basing their opinion on our religious beliefs, basing their opinion on democratic living. Suppose now we hear what ideas you have on the Supreme Court decision. I like the Supreme Court ruling on our segregation because I think that we as Negroes can get a broader education and can uh, advance farther than we have in the past. And one other important reason is as the communists cannot use this as propaganda against the democratic form of government. Uh, the segregation laws were created at a time right after the Civil War when there was an uh, intense feeling against the Negroes when the whites had only thought of the Negroes as working in their house and so forth. And you must realize that it must have been sort of hard for them to uh, get used to someone being accepted as their equal after working for them and something as though a cat or a household animal or something that you expect to see but there's no great love for. Mm -hmm. And these laws are, are old and they were created by people who had nothing to do with this modern civilization of ours and they are altogether outdated. Um, I'm pleased with the issue that segregation has ended. But for myself, I would not like to attend the schools with the white children because of the fact that we aren't welcome. Mm. And I think that the consequence will be a mixture of Negroes and whites. But the consequence will also be an embarrassing situation for the Negroes. Three days after the Supreme Court decision, the Parent Teachers Association met at a white elementary school. Sonia, and I'd like to know what some of the rest of you think, and I'd like to hear some opinions from some of the rest of you. I'm a classroom teacher here in the school. Personally, as a teacher, I wouldn't mind teaching both colored and white children because I don't think that there'd really be any problem. I think where the real problem would be would be in the home because that's where you, where you learn your prejudice is at home, and you've got to uh, educate these parents. Thank you. This problem is not something new. We've seen it's it... Brave woman work itself out in the armed services here in the South. We've seen it work itself out in the postal services. We've seen it work itself out in the police forces of our communities or through the South. We go into the stores with colored people. We try on the clothes that they try on and we buy them that they have already tried on and uh, they seem to fit us and we seem to like it. It reminds me of the scene from the, the movie from the Green Book. Uh, if you've seen it, where he's not allowed to try in the suit, he's not allowed to try in the clothes to see if they fit. I believe with all of my heart that this problem will be worked out. I hope that it will not, that it will be worked out gradually. I hope that they can enter the first grade and work from there on up, and then it will work itself out so gradually that we will not be conscious of the fact that we've had a problem. I believe the South will come forward 
with a progressive move and that this section of the South will not be radical enough to do foolish like maybe some other sections of the South will do. <laughs> As for me, the Negro PTA it was something that I had looked forward to with anticipation because had the Supreme Court ruled otherwise, it would have, to my mind, been somewhat of a letdown or we, the United States would have lost faith in the world because of the problem of segregation. As of now, we will have some views from Mrs. Hope. Adam Cameron, in my opinion, we don't want, we don't want to be in the home and sleeping and doing with the white people. We want a free, we want to live free and feel free. We want schools like they have. We want streets like they have. We want homes like they have. We just want the same wages. We work like they do. We want wages like they do. We don't want to be in their homes and in their schools. We want schools of our own. We There's are people, schools are just own. people. It's and not we have job children, description. and we want our children brought up just like the white people brought up, but we want them to be just them. We want them to be ourselves. We don't want like a heap of them think we want. We want freedom in every way and everywhere. We want to feel free. I just burn within me sometimes when I see the condition of our children and our homes, and that caused so much crime. That's why the crimes come in, back alleys and back streets, over the fence. When they clean up that and put us on the map, like the white, we'll feel free, like the white. and that's as far as we want to go. We just want our equal rights. It's due us. All right, thank you, Mrs. Hope. Nakatosh, Louisiana, is 73 Come miles on, from Shreveport, 58 miles to Alexandria. As with Gastonia, no Supreme Court action since the Dred Scott decision hit it with such impact. This is Cunningham of the Nagatosh Times. We believe that the Supreme Court decision ignores the fact that for good or ill, the white South pays almost all the taxes that go to the school system, and that he who controls the pace had better be considered in making plans. It is this factor that makes us decide that Monday's decision may well turn out to be a disaster for the Negro. Nagatosh has one colleague, for white only. There is a high school for each race. The Negro has made tremendous advances in this state and in the South in the past 15 years, and that leads me to say that segregation for both races is best. Segregation has and is working in the South, which contains two-thirds of the Negro population. The population of the Negro people in the United States is 15 million population of the Negro people in the South is 10 million. In Minnesota, with 14,022 Negroes, or one out of every 200, it certainly wouldn't be the same situation as compared with Mississippi, with a population of 90 out of every 200. Okay, so what he's saying here is, the reason segregation works in the South is because he's saying there's too many Negroes down here comp compared to uh, other states. Let's take a step back. Why is that? Because the Southern states had slaves imported in there. Like, this is, this is one of the craziest things I've ever heard. Maybe it's genius. Maybe I just don't get it. But the idea that the argument for segregation, he's saying, well, because there's too many, there's too many Negroes down here compared to other places. Sir, do you know why? I'm now going to throw this discussion open to you and receive your questions and comments. Even though the Supreme Court has passed a ruling that segregation should be abandoned, 
That's no sign it will be. I believe that the niggers will still go to their school and we'll go to our school. Unless they have some system of zoning and that wouldn't work in Natchitoches because... Uh, the, the closed captions from YouTube are terrible and I'm really sorry. The, the whites and the colors are live too close to one another. You just couldn't zone it off any way. There'd be a white going to colored school and colored going to white school. Just a few and those few would be very unhappy. Uh, I personally do not believe that the Negro of the South wants to go to school with the uh, white people. Therefore, if the law is passed and uh, uh, segregation is done away with and we do go to school with them, I believe that uh, such things as race riots and and other things will come about because I do not believe the South is ready for segregation, non-segregation, excuse me. And you have to consider the fact that uh, there are an awful lot of colored teachers in the state, in our state of Louisiana, and if we did away with segregation right now and say had the two races intermingling in school next year, well, there would be an awful lot of colored teachers out of jobs because, uh, well, it, it would just be that way. I mean, mostly if... What? Here's the thing I have a problem with. I don't... I don't... I'm not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and say like, they shouldn't be concerned because here these people are sitting here and they're like, okay, everything we've ever been told, everything we've ever experienced is just got overturned basically overnight. Okay. But from what I understand about Natchitoches, remember my family has been in Natchitoches since before it was the United States, right? Back before the Louisiana Purchase, my family was in this area. The idea that you can separate into this binary, these are the black people, these are the white people, or these are the black, these are the colored people, it just doesn't work down there. People are so mixed. A colored teacher and a white teacher would both apply at the same place. Well, most probably the white teacher would get the job. A decision of the Supreme Court has been made that segregation has no place in public schools. We were asking you today to come prepared to discuss some of the problems that might face you as a result of this decision. What difference might this make in your lives as craftsmen, as workers? How do you feel that this Supreme Court decision will work out in education? In my opinion, Ms. Martin, I think that the decision handed down by the Supreme Court is one of the most wonderful things that happened in America, and especially in the South, in the last 50 years, and it will affect me greatly. Speaking of myself only, not being financially able to go to a different college and spending money I figure if this law is put into action that I'll be able to attend one college right here in my hometown of Natchitoches, and that college is Northwestern State College to obtain an education. And the colored students mingle. I don't think there, there will be any conflicts between them and uh, because I've lived with white people before. I am a veteran. And I slept with them, I ate with them, and we got along fine. We were just friends. And I became friendly with some of them before I became friendly with my own race. And I think it's the wonderfulest thing that ever happened to America. Uh, Ms. Martin, I would like to ask you what's proud, sir, about in the classroom. I don't know exactly how I would feel in the classroom with the other white boys, man, because we've been segregated all the time. But I would like to experience this because all men are created equal. And I think that if we would go to school with the white I don't know why this, the subtitles just stopped. And have equal facility over there with them, we would be better still. Because we don't know if I'm better than they are or they are better than I am. But I would like to experience, see what would happen if I would go with them. On Saturday evening, there was a meeting of citizens at the courthouse. By custom, the whites and Negroes sat on different sides of the aisle. Very well, have handed down any other decision. For had it done so, it would have said to the world that we are afraid to really risk democracy. I went to at least eight different schools in Pennsylvania and in Detroit, Michigan. 
And in all of my years in the elementary schools and in the high schools, I did not meet one Negro teacher during all of those years under a non-segregated system. Professor Williams. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mecker, are there as many Negroes in the North as in the South? In certain areas, in certain areas there are, and I believe in proportion to population, you don't have as many colored teachers in the non-segregated areas of the North that you have in the South. If I'm going to a state-approved school, coming out with a certificate approved by the state of Louisiana and recognized by the nation, and I'm only qualified to teach my children or colored children, I have no college. business in a classroom at all. Mm -hmm. If my education or my training doesn't, plan, doesn't enable me to fix as good a pipe as a plumber as there can be found anywhere, if my training as a shoemaker does not train me to fix as good a shoes as can be found any place, if my training to use the surgeon's knife, if you will, does not train me to cut on one human being who has the same anatomy as another, I dare say my training has been at fault. I have no business in a classroom at all. I don't think the decision of the Supreme Court is right. I think it's taking away states' rights. And I believe our country was founded on the principle of a democracy for the people and by the people. And I believe that you people, our colored people, will agree that Louisiana has done all they could to give equal opportunities to all people, regardless Look of color, race, and creed. Give her the stink eye. And we should give everybody equal opportunity. But I've been living around the colored people all my life, and I don't believe they want to go to our white schools. They want to have their own schools and their own things so they'll feel like they belong to them and not mixing with the whites. Huh. On the seventh day, after the Supreme Court decision, the people of Nagatach went to church. As citizens of the United States, let us not be... For all my family and friends who are from Louisiana, from Natchitoches, do you recognize this church? I'm sure some of, somebody does. All right, this is almost done. Hasty. But let us remember to think and plan with the spirit of Christ. Some of the good people of both races who live under the protection of the United States may not be satisfied with the decision of the Supreme Court, but all of us know that the Supreme Court of the United States is the highest governing power that we have in the world. Paul tells us, let every soul be subject to the higher power. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. Amen. And in Gastonia, North Carolina, on the seventh day, the people went to church. My own heritage is rooted in the South. My father, born in 1847 in South Carolina, owned slaves for a few years. He, owned slaves. he lived through the hard days of reconstruction and under the carpet dagger. And yet he came to adjust himself to these new economic conditions and to change the race relations. And I suppose the last area of my own life to come under the influence and dominance of Jesus Christ 
was in my own attitude towards the Negro. And so now for several years I have held the conviction, and I still hold it, that the practice of segregation cannot be defended on the basis of the Christian religion. And now that the highest judicial body... I, just, I am so sorry to cry like this, Mom. Just... Say a second. <clears throat> um. Just <clears throat> frustrating for me, one, as a Christian, I feel like a lot of times um, Christianity gets, like all religions, weaponized to harm people. Um, but the gospel, uh, it, it's, you know, Jesus tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. And, uh, you know, in the New Testament, there's um, a verse, uh, and I'll just not quote it directly, but basically it says, you know, in Christ, there is no um, slave or free. There's no Jew or Greek. There's no male or female, but all are in Christ. And it's the sense of, if you're really a Christian, um, these differences fade away and, and, and they, they are just so minimized in relation to, uh, your relationship with Christ together as brothers and sisters. And so, you know, I have this man here, he's like, my dad was born in the 1800s and owns a bunch of slaves. And, and he's, he's here and he's saying, listen, this is an area that has been hard for me. It's one of the last areas that has had to kind of come under this jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the reality of the Christian faith. Um, and I really respect him for saying that. And um, it's, it's uh, I mean, if you're watching this and, and you think that that this is old news, that this is stuff that we've already, we're done with this, we move on, it's like, honey, we have just started, this is, we hit, this was a half step forward, and we have so much further to go, um, but if more of us could be like this pastor, and at least just admit, hey, this is, I'm struggling with this, um, I didn't grow up believing this, I actually grew up believing the opposite, this, this is the prejudice, and this is the the uh, stuff that I'm bringing to the table. Um, but it doesn't mean people can't be changed for the better. In this republic of ours, consisting of nine men appointed by three different presidents of the United States, <laughs> has given this unanimous decision. I feel it to be my conscientious duty to do my best to implement this action helpfully, patiently, lovingly, and realistically. What a great pastor. We have tried to hold a mirror behind two southern cities as they debate and discuss seriously and soberly a new aspect of an old problem. I mean, this is not abstract history. This is not, you know, what people sometimes come on the channel and they're like, why won't you just shut up about history? Move on, be positive, like stop dwelling on the past. America's a great nation. Okay, unpacking that real quickly. America is a great nation. That's why I could sit here and talk about it. If she wasn't a great nation, I wouldn't be allowed to sit here and talk about it. And that doesn't mean <laughs> that YouTube hasn't tried to shut me up because they definitely have. But... All that to say is that we have to talk about it. And what kind of a fool wakes up in the morning and doesn't remember who he was yesterday? What kind of a fool wakes up in the morning and doesn't know anything about what happened yesterday or the week before or the year before? Do you wake up, do you, do you wake up every morning and not know anything about what happened except for the exact moment you're in? No, of course not. Why would we do that as a community? Why would we do that as a community? I think this is the power of personal stories and why I love sharing interviews and talking with just the regular people. Because at the end of the day, when we're studying history and we're trying to learn, I don't want to go back and hear what the politicians had to say from the era. I don't want to hear any of that. I want to hear the man on the street, the kids in the classroom, the teachers, the parents. What did they say? How did they say it? 
I think that's the history we need to get back to. And so this was really beautiful. Um, this was hard and emotional. And um, I don't know. I I would love to hear. I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. And uh, yeah, I apologize for all the crying. <laughs> um, but I think Natchitoches in particular, it just uh, it's it's meaningful to me, and it's hard to hear uh, some of the opinions from there from as recent as the 1950s. Um, but there's always people can always change and like this pastor showed um people can change and and we can work to love each other and i think we all need a little bit of that so let me know what you think and we'll talk soon <laughs> bye